And uh, now we are going to stay in the Philippines. And I want to welcome Julius Pellegrini. Good day, everyone. My name is Julius Pellegrina from the Department of Science and Technology for his Products Research and Development Institute, Philippines. For this year's World Wood Day online symposium, let me present the Wonder Pest, suitability of paper mulberry for furniture, handmade paper, and briquette. In 1935, paper mulberry was first introduced in the College of Forestry and Natural Resources, and today, all the 14 local communities of Las Banas Laguna are severely invaded by this species. It also reaches other municipalities as far as Santa Cruz Laguna, which is 24.5 kilometers from point of origin, and Taguig City, Metro Manila, which is 57.7 kilometers from Las Banas. It abounds our surroundings with its growth, similar to grasses or weeds, invading vacant lots, river banks, roadsides, except for forested and, or heavily shaded areas. The DOSC, FPRDI, and Picard explored its potentials to address the issues of its invasiveness. Based on its physical mechanical properties, paper mulberry falls under class four or moderately low relative density, which possible end uses are production of pulp and paper, toys, Venetian blinds and veneers, also for medium grade furniture and cabinets. Based on its volumetric shrinkage, paper mulberry is categorized to group three or medium volumetric shrinkage for conventional and ordinary furniture. And based on its strength, it is categorized as class five or low strength group, which is recommended for light construction where strength, hardness, and durability are not of critical requir requirements. These categories are based from the FPRDI trade bulletin series four, six, and seven. We also determined the following data to support its potential for furniture manufacture. First is the lumber recovery. Two methods were applied in cutting the lumber, light sewing and sewing around. Based on the figures, light sewing is more recommended as it produces higher lumber recovery at 48.82%. Second is the seasoning characteristics and drying schedule. Using FPRDI developed portable solar power dryer, with auxiliary biomass heater, the drying period was 10 days. It is easy to dry, but prone to drying defects, such as checking and splitting. Third is its bending qualities. With reference to the FPRDI standard for bending quality, paper mulberry rated very good in terms of solid and laminated wood bending. After all the tests and preparations of materials for furniture, we produced prototype lectern and ottoman chair. The fabricated prototype chair passed the general domestic level three of ISO 7173-1989 test standard. Hence, it is suitable for furniture manufacture. Handmade paper making. Ordinary plain handmade, handmade paper sheets were produced following the FPRDI developed handmade paper making process. The process starts with manual extraction of bark, followed by steaming, scraping, drying, pulping, pulping, pulp disintegration, and sheet forming and drying. And here are sample photos of our handmade paper make handmade paper with color and accent. For a one kilogram sample of pulp, 21 sheets of 20, 26 by 26 inch handmade paper was produced from the bast fiber extracted from the bottom part of the lug, while 17 sheets were formed from the middle and top portions. The production cost per sheet of handmade paper is 91 cents in US dollars. For the charcoal or briquette production, log trims, twigs, tops and branches, and other waste materials were collected and sun dried in preparation for charcoaling. With the use of a modified drum kiln, a 60 kilogram waste material sample was burned into charcoal. The charcoal was pulverized using the charcoal crusher. Cornstarch and hot water was prepared and mixed to serve as binder in the briquette formation. After mixing the binder evenly with the pulverized charcoal, briquettes were formed using a manual briquetter. For a kilogram pulverized charcoal, 55 pieces of briquettes were formed. The formed briquettes were air dried for a week. From the 60, 60 kilogram woody portion of paper mulberry, 12.90 kilograms or 21.5% charcoal was produced. The heating value of briquettes are lower compared to the charcoal from the wood because of the added binder. 
The heating values of charcoal and wood briquettes are within the range of the heating values of commercialized charcoals and briquettes. The direct mater material cost for briquettes was computed at 39 cents in US dollars per kilogram of charcoal. So yes, paper mulberry can give us furniture, handmade paper and briquettes from its wood and vast fiber. For recommendations, we should exert more efforts to develop paper mulberry as a valuable resource through application of existing knowledge by the community to pursue into livelihood that may help to control its spread or invasiveness. That is all. Thank you very much and mabuhay. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Julius. Very interesting presentation as well. Uh, and uh, well, are, are there questions for him? Because uh, if not, I certainly have one. Yeah, I would like to know. So. Um, so those three uses uh, seem seem compatible or 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 um, uh, appropriate for these invasive species. No, you talked about the charcoal, the furniture, and uh, the um, the paper also. Yes, then, how many uh, paper? What do you think is more realistic for local communities, for instance? Also, when you have to take into account the the cost of harvesting the wood. For yes. Instance. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, actually, paper mulberry spark or bust fiber was used. Um, actually, it was stopped being used in 1987 because of the total lag ban. So uh, the communities cannot harvest the paper mulberry. But that is why we conducted this study uh, to support uh, the use of these uh, species. Because as of now, just like what I've said, it is hard to cut and to utilize uh, forest trees here in the Philippines. So based on the result of this study, we can uh, actually use the results to support or to make a policy brief That's in right. order to somewhat not be that strict when it comes to yeah. using of these um, species. Actually, the uh, communities here in the Philippines, um, some communities uses uh, the paper mulberry for charcoal, but it is not, but it is mm -hmm. illegal. So. And then um, there is also one shop which uses um, paper mulberry bark uh, to uh, for their raw materials to the handmade paper making. But because of mm -hmm. the laws and the uh, policies, it is hard to utilize mm -hmm. or to harvest this species. So, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So we do have a question in the chat now. Um, Mrs. Uh, Lakshika, uh, he's asking. Uh, what oh. is the proportion of cellulose uh, and hemicellulose and lignin of this species? Actually, oh yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for that question. But unfortunately, uh, in our study, it was not tackled. No, but um, okay. maybe there are literatures on this, so I cannot okay. give you the proportion of the cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. Mm -hmm. But um, based on the um, wood bending quality of uh, the paper mulberry wood. Um, I think the lignin content of the wood of paper mulberry is low because uh, it has okay. a very good quality when it comes to bending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much.